Should you have a two page resume? Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and every month I do a couple of resume reviews for people looking for jobs and internships in robotics. I pick these resumes from my monthly LinkedIn post. I'll link my LinkedIn up here and put it in the description below for you to check it out. Now let's get to today's resume and I also want to answer the question, should you have a two page resume? Now if you're looking for an internship or job in robotics, you should not have a two page resume because most people will not go to the second page. They may not even notice it. Even if it's a physical one, they might not flip and see the second side. Now remember, resumes are about communicating who you are and what is relevant to the job. So if you have a two page resume and it has information that has nothing to do with the job that you're applying for, it appears as though you have not put in the effort to figure out what is relevant. It appears that you cannot concisely communicate the information that is required for the person to make the decision. So I would say stick to one page. Yes, if you have a lot of information, that means you have to trim and include the most relevant information as well as your best foot forward. So let's say you have five projects that you've done in computer vision and you're applying for a computer vision. Stick to the three most recent ones or stick to the three that shows your best work. All right, let's take a look at today's resume. Now, first impression, I've already spoken about the two page thing. But the other thing I want to talk about is as first impression, this looks very clean and concise. And there are very quick words that pop out, which is great for a resume. For example, computer vision engineer, Mars laboratory, mechanical engineering, IIT. So it's good that you have things that are popping and giving a good first impression of, of who this person is. Now, this person also sent me a message saying that they're looking for computer vision roles. So I would say go ahead and highlight that a little bit more. That means that given they have worked with YOLO, C++, Python, TensorFlow, and even OpenCV, I would include that off the bat. So I would include a section of skills and include those skills that are very relevant to computer vision so that you can tell them off the bat that, okay, if you're looking for these skills, I have those skills. I also want to highlight that this person has included LinkedIn and GitHub information, which is really good. Good job on that. Now they are applying for jobs in US, so I'm not sure why they still have their Indian cell phone number in there. I would say change it. Now let's get into some details. So they're talking about this project that they've done as a machine learning engineer at New Space Research and Technology. It's good that they've included all the technologies used at par as part of this project because it shows that you have this much experience in using a particular technology. It's one thing to say that, hey, I know C++, which you should off the bat, but then you should also include it throughout your projects to show that I did this project in C++. I used YOLO in this project, meaning I know these technologies well enough. The one thing I don't like is it's this huge sentence or paragraph that's been written about their work. Coming back to the whole concise point, you write bullet points to be concise. You do not make long sentences or multiple sentences in a bullet point. It kind of kills the whole impact. Now, the other reason this is important is because recruiters or hiring managers or even engineers who are looking at resumes, they're looking at a lot of resumes in one go. They are not going to spend as much time on a resume as you think. So if someone has to read a whole sentence, they're probably not going to have the time to do that. If there are simple bullet points that someone can skim through and get the information they need quickly, it's way more effective. So make sure you're not using these long sentences, but having bullet points that can quickly communicate what you did in that project. So these essentially would be two, three separate bullet points if you were keeping it as it is. I also like that you have mentioned how you have, how you've improved accuracy with solid numbers. That's always a great thing to have on your resume. Also, there's a bit of repetition, target detection, recognition and tracking. And then you're again saying that you experimented different approaches to detect and recognize extremely small objects. It just has to be one bullet point, no repetition required. So I would just go with experimented different approaches for target detection, recognition and tracking of extremely small objects. Now, another thing, because you're saying custom data set, it's good to include how much data you worked with. Now, when it comes to computer vision, there are generally 
popular data sets that are used. So if you include the name of that data set, people kind of get an idea of what you worked on. But if you're saying that you worked on some kind of custom data that is either data collected by you or your team, it's important, especially because you're talking about machine learning and computer vision. It's important that you include how much data you used because that is a question that you can expect to get as well now i know i said that two pages is not good but i also want to highlight the fact that it's good job that you've included your more recent experiences up front and the older one on the second page now as i mentioned before you have two ways to go about it either remove the previous experiences or only highlight the ones that you think are best for the position now by trying to put so many projects and experiences i think you're missing out on including the depth of the work that you've done so for example in this project you've been working from april to october that's a couple of months and all you have is two bullet points and then again you worked on this for almost five months and just two bullet points so it's better if you in show depth because that will also have a lot of value. Instead of simply mentioning one or two things, try to highlight the projects that you've done best. And this way you will also kind of be able to influence how the interview goes. By having one project or one experience with more bullet points and having worked on it for a longer period of time, you can expect that that is where you will get most questions from. So I would say given you have a lot of experience, Pick two or three projects that you are most well-versed with, where you can answer questions with ease and kind of expand on that and include more information. Because I'm guessing both of these projects are not something you did in school or college. It's something you did with a company. So it's a great way to further highlight that you are someone who has worked in a company or with a company and you bring that kind of experience and you're not just a student who's done a couple of projects. I just want to clarify, I'm not trying to say that your projects are not worthwhile. I'm saying try and highlight the ones that are most important so you can show more depth. You can show that, hey, I'm not just someone who worked on this for two months. I'm someone who has worked on this for six months. And trust me, when someone's looking to hire full time, that holds more weightage. Now, another good thing is you've got a couple of publications and you've also included them. Great job on that. As I mentioned before, it's great that you have this whole section of skills. I would just make sure that I'm putting it on the first page in case someone skips the second page. The other thing I want to say, because you're someone who's interested in computer vision and probably machine learning or deep learning, Make sure you're highlighting that versus everything else. And on that same line, because you're not looking for path planning and localization positions, I would say trim that and just highlight computer vision and deep learning frameworks. Now, the other thing I also want to talk about is, let's say you are kind of in between and you're looking to go for both either computer vision or machine learning or navigation positions. Make them into two resumes. So I used to do that too when I was in college and I wasn't sure exactly which subfield I'm interested in. I had one place where I had all of my projects subdivided in different fields. That's localization, path planning, computer vision, so on and so forth. And then based on the job I was applying for, I would pick those sections and put in on my resume and remove what I'm not applying for. So for example, if you're applying for a localization position, I'll keep the localization and path planning, but remove the deep learning frameworks. Again, I'm saying this because you have the data where you can split it and target specifically for the position that you're interested in. Overall, I think you have great experiences and you've included the relevant things. It just needs to be formatted. It just needs to be represented in a way where you can bring the focus and get someone to stop on your resume and give you a call back. I do hope that this resume review helps someone out there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.